Now we are going to talk about RFLPs. People don't use them as much as what they used to use them before because now we have PCR technology. However, it is important that students know about RFLPs because they will invariably encounter this. So let's look at this. RFLPs basically means restriction fragment length polymorphism. Restriction, of course, means the fragment that is generated by an endonuclease, DNA fragment. So R is restriction. I have explained what that is. Fragment, I have explained what that is. Length polymorphism. So length polymorphism is basically means more than one shapes or more than one forms. So because in when mutations or changes occur in DNA, they can actually add or remove restriction sites or those palindromic sites where restriction enzymes can cut. So here, let's do this exercise. Here we have a DNA sample. We use this DNA sample and we cut it with an enzyme 1. We cut the same fragment with enzyme 2, enzyme 2 and one together. So when we run them on gel, we will get this pattern. So the enzyme one has cut one fragment into two pieces, cut it once and generated two pieces. So here we have two fragments and they are about one is B is slightly bigger than the A. In case of enzyme two, it generates two fragments also, but one is much bigger than the other. One plus two will of course generate three fragments. It will cut the DNA two times. In the other cases, we were cutting DNA. Enzyme 1 and enzyme 2 can cut the, our sample DNA only once. When we add 1 and 2 together, it is going to cut DNA two times and generate three fragments, which you can see here. So basically, we can see that the enzymes are cutting at DNA at specific locations. And how can we use this information? So now imagine there's a disease. Here we are looking at, for example, sickle cell anemia. Normal DNA has three restriction sites for a particular enzyme, MST2, uh, as it is named here. This is a restriction enzyme, endonuclease. This enzyme can cut this gene, the normal globin gene, into two fragments. It will cut it three times, once here, once here, and once here. So this whole gene is cut three times and two fragments are generated from this gene. Here is fragment number one, fragment number two. Say there is a mutation and that mutation has removed this particular restriction site. So now what happens? This, our enzyme, MST2, will cut it into these two pieces and only one fragment will be generated of this particular gene. It will not be two different fragments. When we run this gel, we will separate these fragments. When initially we saw, as we saw in our previous slide, this fragment will run faster than this fragment. So here, this is a smaller fragment. This is the larger fragment. In case of sickle cell anemia, where the mutation was removed, the, the whole gene stays together because it is cut at the two very ends and the gene is sitting here at a higher location, at a higher level because it's larger. So this is one way we can detect a mutation. We can use these restriction enzymes to detect a disease. I need to tell you a few more things. If we isolate DNA from a human being and run it on a gel, it is very heavy and it will just accumulate pretty close to the well. It won't move very further because DNA is so large. Generally, we, when we cut a DNA it, with an enzyme, restriction sites are at several, at many, many, many places throughout the genome. Here is a gel showing the digested DNA with an enzyme. See how it has made a smear. With PCR, you can see the bands. When you cut the DNA with an enzyme, you don't see the bands. You see the smear. Here also you will just have a whole smear and you won't be able to see this particular band. When you are using a restriction enzyme to detect a disease, you will not be able to see a band. 
So how do we see the bands? So we can tell whether we would know whether this gene has lost its restriction site, whether the mutation is there or not. So we will talk about how we can do that, but I will again want to point out that also like VNTRs, these RFLPs are also inherited in Mendelian fashion. So if you can use this technique to form pedigrees and you can very easily see where which individual in a pedigree is heterozygous, where the person is homozygous and both with recessive and the dominant form. Here, for example, is another, another allele that we are looking at. In this allele, there is no restriction site and here we have a restriction site. So we can use this and build a pedigree and we can follow this pedigree, this particular gene or mutation in this pedigree. We haven't talked about how we detect the, the products of restriction uh, endonucleases, whether the DNA has been cut or not. But here I just wanted to show you that these mutations in alleles are also inherited in Mendelian fashion. Next, we will talk about how you can detect uh, DNA restriction endonuclease sites, whether they have been mutated or not.